Hello and welcome back to the Blush Studio. Today I'm going to talk you through this loose watercolor flower tutorial um, with some peonies and some other flowers. This is a video that I recorded almost a year ago now, really when I first started kind of thinking and playing around with YouTube. So the quality is not great. You can see that my head will kind of pop in and out of the screen a little bit, but bear with me and we'll talk you through this one. So with a looser style, I really focus a lot on color and how the colors bleed and play into the space. So you can see I'm tapping more pigmented color. They're at the base of what is going to end up being my peony. I do work off of a loose sketch, but with a looser style, more modern watercolor style, I don't stick with it too closely. I'm just kind of more realistic in general, so I need that to go off of. So again, I'm just kind of creating these petals. I start with the front and I really focus on having that negative space in between each of the petals. When you're working with something a little more abstract, you need to have those small elements to help guide your eye with the actual direction of the piece. So I'm gonna talk you through a little bit how we use like how dark and light things are to create depth, but one of my biggest tips is definitely having that negative space in between each of the petals. Um, so you can see it with at the top of each of my petals for this peony, I have an irregular shape. I do kind of like a wiggle at the top and that's just to kind of show how they're a little more organic, they're nice and floppy, and it helps to kind of give that look and effect without necessarily um, having to like do extra lines or shading with this looser style. So again, shading it a little deeper at the base and you'll see that I continue to build up that color at the base of these petals. And that's one way that you can use value to kind of showcase the shape of the petals themselves. All right, now we're gonna start building up the center of this peony. Now you'll see that I kind of tap the yellow color that I have into the pink of the petals. I really think with modern watercolor, some of the beauty in it is how the colors bleed and they kind of ebb and flow and you'll see different colors repeated elsewhere. Um, so don't be afraid to let the colors purposefully bleed. Now I'm zooming in here because I want you to see how I worked on this center. Now I can tell right now that I don't like that the values are so close. So you can see that I just a second ago I was picking up pigment because I saw that um, you couldn't really differentiate the center of the peony from the petals themselves and I really wanted to make that differentiation. So I'm going to try a couple of different things here. Um, the problem with kind of this looser modern style is that um, not everything works the same with different flowers or with different colors. Um, so I ended up deciding to add some darker elements in there to kind of help it to pop. And then again, building up that intensity, you'll see me doing this kind of going back and forth over and over throughout this painting, just kind of building up color and intensity and using that to create that depth and definition. So that is our peony. Um, and then we're going to start in on some of our smaller flowers. So I have some smaller flowers and some greenery and even some radishes to add in on this painting. All right, time to start on these silver dollar eucalyptus leaves. Now I love these because they have like that dusty blue green color and that unique round shape that you really don't see with a lot of other greenery. Sorry, I'm gonna cut in and out here a little bit. I kept getting my head in front of the camera by accident. Um, but those lighter areas, I get that by pushing down on my round brush a little bit harder. So a harder push will give you um, less pigmented areas of paint. Um, there's just it just doesn't transfer as well. I also like that it has more of an organic feel overall. Now, if you look at that top eucalyptus leaf, you can see that there's a little bit of pink in it now. Obviously you can't see that right now, but see there's some pink. I took the color from the peony and I put it on top of that leaf. And just, um, you would see that normally just because there is reflective color um, in nature, but it's especially important and useful for a more modern style like this. Now please bear with me while my head pops in and out here. Um, I'm creating some smaller flowers besides this peony. I like to have that contrast and um, just some variety to add some visual interest. But I wanted you to see kind of how I'm repeating the um, negative space between the petals and I'm slowly building out from the center just like with the peony itself. I also like to use with this kind of thing um, a gradient of color when there's going to be a lot of the same flower repeated throughout. So you can see I started with a really dark one and it got lighter. Um, and then I added these dark centers to further define the 
flowers themselves. Just pulling some of that darker color out to the edge of the petals. Um, not all of them, but some of the individual petals to help define um, the direction and how they move and how they grow. To create some unity throughout this painting, I added a couple more silver dollar eucalyptus up at the top um, just to have that repetition. And to create that space that I've been kind of alluding to, um, I'm adding lighter leaves behind the eucalyptus now that the first ones have dried. So the originals are dried and I'm adding some lighter ones in. Um, that gives the illusion of space. It's called aerial perspective. Um, it's used really a lot for like more professional um, illustration and for landscapes and stuff like that, but I find it really useful for this more modern style as well. So you'll see me using that throughout this painting while I'm finishing it up. Alright, now to the fun part. I actually created this for a um, styled shoot that was a farm to table theme and so I incorporated different fruit and vegetables in all of the bouquets that I made um, and for this one it, there were radishes so I'm gonna kind of play around with this I mess with the color a lot I really wanted it to be a nice rich red and so I wanted the deep saturation and the sophistication of kind of a more burgundy but I didn't want to lose um, some of that richer, more saturated red, especially because my peony dried a lot lighter than I originally wanted to. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind. Watercolor always dries um, much lighter and a little more desaturated than when you initially put it down. So don't be afraid to bump up that saturation a little bit. I was playing around with it. My paper bubbled a little bit here. Um, I don't normally overwork with uh, this looser style but it happens sometimes and actually can help if you're working on something rounder to help you define the space. Now you see that line between those two radishes that's what I'm talking about with kind of using that negative space in between to help define the two different the two separate elements in this painting. So continuing to build you'll see I just kind of mess with this till it gets the rounded shape that I like especially because it's so wet um, I have to kind of keep coming back and messing with it. Now for this third radish it's going to be kind of fading in the background so I'm going to make it much lighter than my other two. I just I want it to be there. I like to have things in thirds but I don't want it to be um, shouting for attention or fighting with the other two for attention. Alright, last element for us today is I'm going to add the actual leaves for the radishes. These are big and floppy, and so I started with a ton of really, really wet pigment. and I just kind of slapped it around and allowed my brush to wiggle to create more of the texture and the more whimsical elements of the leaves. So again, on that left side, I wanted it to be a little bit lighter in color, so I pushed my brush down a little bit more. And the nice things with these being, um, you know, just kind of messy and organic is that you can kind of build off of it. And if you don't like it, you try again. If you like this looser style, I actually have a full um, video full of little tips and tricks for working with um, looser watercolor flowers. So I'll have that link down below if you're interested. Now, I really liked this green, but I didn't love that it wasn't repeated throughout the rest of the painting. The eucalyptus leaves were much more blue, so I decided to give these smaller flowers some um, little leaves to go with them. It helps to kind of repeat that green so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. You really want everything to be cohesive and repetitive. So even the radishes, I built that color off of the peony color. Even though I knew I wanted it to be darker and brighter, I wanted to start with that base. Now I would love to know if you prefer this looser style of painting or if you like the more realistic style that I tend to work in. Let me know in a comment down below. So continuing to, like I said, that radish kind of gave me some trouble. I just kept building it on until I was pretty happy with it. I um, meant that sometimes I was going a little bit back and forth, um, to, especially to get that more rounded shape, but um, I feel like it was worth it in the end. I ended up really liking how it came together. And there she is. For this item and the other paintings in this series, you can find them for sale on Society6 or just see the whole collection. I'll have that link down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.